Hi, I'm Michelle Bega with a look at what's happening in Latin America now. But first, our news trivia. This past weekend, a lunar eclipse occurred. It produced what is known as a blood moon. Which part of the Americas could it be seen from? We'll have the answer later. Colombia continues to investigate the assassination of Paraguay's anti-drug prosecutor. He was on his honeymoon on the Caribbean island of Peru. Police released still images of the suspect. They may have been captured on a closed circuit camera. The man is wearing a Panama hat and Bermudas. Police also presented a sketch of the suspect. They've created checkpoints as well in the neighboring city of Cartagena. My colleague Joel Richards has more on the heartbreaking aftermath of the murder as Pechi's body was taken to his home country, Paraguay. This is a case that has left Paraguay, Colombia and Latin America as a whole in shock. Marcelo Pesci was a high-profile prosecutor in his home country. The 45-year-old worked major cases, including Operation Aldranza P, the largest of its type in Paraguay's history, with over $100 million seized. And just this week, courts upheld the extradition warrant for a money laundering and drug trafficking suspect from Paraguay to the United States. That, too, was Pesci's work. His funeral was held over the past weekend in Asuncion, the Paraguayan capital, and Paraguay President Mario Abdo said the country was in mourning. 17 arrests have been made in Colombia this week as authorities from Colombia itself, the US and Paraguay, along with Interpol and Europol, joined forces to investigate this crime. The repercussions are not only in his home country and in Colombia, where the crime of his murder took place, but really across the region, because beyond the personal tragedy for the family, Pessi's wife posted on Instagram, the couple are expecting a baby, is the wider implication. What many specialists point out is that the murder of such an important public figure shows that those combating organized crime, for them, nowhere is safe. Chileans are protesting the death of a journalist. 29-year-old Francisca Sandoval was shot on the sidelines of a union demonstration on May 1st. The rally was held for International Workers Day. She's the first journalist to be killed on the job since 1986 during the presidency of Augusto Pinochet. Later, vigils were held in honor of Sandoval. Protests broke out and finally ended with water cannons being used by Chilean police. Colombia continues to take giant strides towards respecting the rights of terminally ill patients. Last week, the nation became the first in Latin America to authorize assisted medical suicide for patients suffering serious or incurable illnesses. Medically assisted suicide differs from euthanasia as the patient ends their life with medical staff present instead of a doctor administering the procedure. Six of nine judges of Colombia's constitutional court ruled that patients must meet the standards already in place for euthanasia. Now let's take a look at the stories that we're following for next week. First, Peru is demanding $4.5 billion in compensation over Spain's Repsol oil spill. The country's worst environmental disaster occurred in January. An Italian flagged tanker was unloading crude oil at a Repsol owned refinery 30 kilometers north of Lima when an accident caused the oil spill. The company says it was due to a wave caused by an eruption on the island of Tonga. The suit seeks $3 billion for environmental damages and another $1.5 billion as compensation for locals who were affected by the disaster. And second, Argentina's President Alberto Fernandez confirmed that he will seek re-election in 2023. The president confirmed the news during his European tour while being interviewed by a Spanish television network. Back at home, protests continue over inflation. With Argentina's ongoing economic crisis, Fernandez's popularity has taken a hit. Fernandez believes, however, that he has the necessary strength to address the crisis. And now the answer to our news trivia. Trick question, all of the above. The best visibility for the blood moon this weekend was in the Americas. Images shared are from Mexico, Argentina, Chile, and North America. This lunar eclipse happens when the sun, earth, and moon align, and the moon passes through the darkest part of the earth's shadow. The eclipse lasted just over five hours. And that's it for this week. We'll see you again soon on Latin America Now.